Greetings, folks, and Merry Christmas. This is our worship service at Trenton United Church for December 25th, uh, 2022. We're not quite at 2023 um, yet. I'm going to put uh, some of the announcements, if I can remember, in the notes for the YouTube video so you can uh, check out what's happening at the church uh, over the next little bit, and you can just scroll down there. And we're, uh, I'm really happy to be... Um, offering this worship service along with our musical leaders for this week, uh, our our award-winning, uh, chart-topping uh, local group, me and the other two. So a big thank you to them for their their musical offerings for this week here in uh, for our worship service. And I'm going to invite you now to bow your heads with me, or you can read along uh, with the prayer that I'll have printed up on the screen. Let's pray these words together. God, on this Christmas morning, we welcome your light into our lives. We gather into this online worship space to be able to say yes to your life, to be able to listen for your word, which has now been made flesh and who has come to dwell among us. As a people of faith, we lift our voices to you. And let's lift our hearts for our opening hymn, which is Go Tell It on the Mountain. Hallelujah. Our gospel reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14, often known as the prologue of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. 
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Uh, before I enter into the time for reflection for this morning, I'd like to be able to share a poem with you that I, I heard not too long ago, but I, I felt spoke both to our scripture passage for this morning and, uh, and thinking about how we encounter the Christ who is born in Bethlehem. This poem is called, I Feel Sorry for Jesus, and it's written by Naomi Shihad Nye. I feel sorry for Jesus. People won't leave him alone. I know he said, wherever two or more are gathered in my name, but I'll bet some days he regrets it. Cozily, they tell you what he wants and doesn't want, as if they just got an email. Remember telephone, that pass it on game, where the message changed dramatically by the time it rounded the circle? Well, people blame terrible pieties on Jesus. They want to be his special pet. Jesus deserves better. I think he's been exhausted for a very long time. He went into the desert, friends. He didn't go into the pomp. He didn't go into the golden chandeliers and say, the truth tastes better here. See, I'm talking like I know. It's dangerous talking for Jesus. You get carried away almost immediately. I stood in the spot where he was born. I closed my eyes where he died and didn't die. Every twist of the Via Dolorosa was written on my skin. And that makes me feel like being silent for him, you know? A secret pouch of listening. You won't hear me mention this again. Folks, all through this Advent season, we have been focusing on the idea of being a part of our Trenton, uh, Trenton River watershed. Uh, we know that here in Trenton, where we live, uh, we are at the, the opening of, of the Trenton River into our, uh, our Bay of Quinty. But we also know that there are many streams and rivers and tributaries that go into uh, this river that leads us to uh, where we are and where our church uh, sits uh, next to the Bay of Quinty and that mouth of the Trent River. And we've been focusing on ideas of how to be connected with the world around us with this sense that all of creation is, uh, we're a part of the creation all around us and part of this local watershed. We focused on different local businesses and charities as well with a sense of the ways that we can connect with uh, with this world in which we have been placed. I'm here on one of the Bleasdell Boulder uh, trails uh, not far away from, well kind of in between Batawa and Trenton and you can probably hear and see the river in the background and there's an old uh, railway bridge well back behind me over uh, over there that you can uh, you can see and it's uh, from 1950 54, so it's it's been here for a while, but but it's neat to be able to be out here in the beauty of the natural world and on this Christmas Day worship to be able to have a sense of the world where God has placed us and the the literal watershed and the streams where we are. 
hearing this running water behind me makes me think of a time when uh, our firstborn was still very new to this world, only about a month old, and we were moving from the eastern townships of Quebec to um, a place uh, in, in western Ontario, in London, Ontario. Uh, but there was one evening where we were on the road and we had to stop unexpectedly because of a big winter storm. And that evening, it, we were having a really hard time uh, convincing this baby to go to sleep. And uh, I walked around with him in my arms and he was very restless and crying. But there was one point where I went over to the sink in, uh, in the room that we were staying in and turned on that running water. And all of a sudden his eyes went wide and he listened to that running water and it seemed to be able to soothe him. And eventually his eyes got a little bit droopy and finally he fell asleep and, and we were able to get some sleep that night as well too. Now, the idea of that rushing water being something that is soothing is something that, that we see in the scripture passages. And of course, we know in, the, in Psalm 23, we hear about the idea of God leading us beside still waters like a shepherd and, and calming our soul. But I think that what was really beautiful in that moment was I recognized that um, none of the things that I could say to this little baby that couldn't understand my words was going to convince them to be able to go to sleep. And I had um, tried all kinds of different things, but simply entering into a place of listening and being quiet allowed for that place of peace and for us to enter into a place of rest as well. Now, in the story, uh, the gospel passage that we read for this morning, we know that in that passage, we hear of a word that is being spoken, a word that is being spoken into perhaps the silence and the darkness of the created world. And we're told that that same word in some mysterious way is also the Christ child that is made flesh and born in our world and that we celebrate on this Christmas day. There's something about that passage that helps us maybe take a step back from all the bustle and, uh, uh, and all kinds of different things that are happening during this Christmas season and for us to be able to acknowledge that God is much greater than perhaps our, our stresses and strains in our lives. And while our struggles uh, are oftentimes meaningful and real, it's also important for us to take that step back and to enter into that place of eternity, to be able to simply listen to the wor word that God is speaking to us and speaking into the world in this presence of the Christ child, this little baby who um, is, is a symbol of, of a word being spoken, perhaps that is even beyond language. I'd like to read a quote for you from a, a passage that I read about this opening of John. I, I feel like it captures the sense of, uh, of, of how we are called to draw back from where, where we might be in the midst of our anxiety. So let's listen to these words now. So many are eager to proclaim God. Pastorally, the prologue of the Gospel of John helps readers understand the length and breadth and depth of God's providence and existence. In the beginning are not our wishes, hopes, dreams, and plans, but God and God's word and God's love toward the world that God chooses to create. Isn't this in a way also how we can perhaps be able to understand the poem that we heard read a little bit earlier, a poem read by an author who um, lived for uh, different parts of her life in the uh, Israel-Palestine that we read about in the Gospels, but of course is still a, a real place in the world today. And she speaks about our tendency sometimes to want to grab a hold of ideas about Jesus and to maybe shoehorn Jesus into our, uh, our ways of, of being in the world and all of our different pieties and messages and, uh, and agendas that we have for the world. But I think on Christmas morning, what we can remember is that there is a Christ child that is there that is just a little baby. 
and um, you may have a lot more to do in your day today or if you're watching this a little bit later there might be family coming or or meals to prepare but even in the midst of all of that can we just take a moment to breathe to be quiet to enter into the silence maybe even to hear the water that is uh, rushing by uh, in this place where I'm standing right now. We have so much that we want to be able to bring to Jesus. And, and I don't think that poem, uh, while it's saying, you know, Jesus is feeling bothered and maybe, <laughs> maybe Jesus has had a, a, a enough of, uh, of all of the different uh, things that are being said about him. I don't think that that means that, you know, we've got to give up on church and stop talking about who Jesus was and uh, what Jesus means to us. And nor does that mean that we can't bring our concerns and our, uh, our anxieties to God through Christ. I think that those are all important parts of our life of faith. But it's also important for us maybe just to remember that at one point in his life, Jesus was just a little baby, that he had parents who were trying to bring him into a place of calm and into a place where he could get his rest. And we can do that too. We can have moments where we can be with Jesus and enter into the places of silence. And think about it, you've got here, you've got to Christmas morning, you made it through all of the different preparations and perhaps it's not exactly what you imagined and maybe there's a mixture of both uh, hopes and joys, but also there can be sadnesses as well and that's all right too. But in the midst of all of that, can we just take a moment to listen? To listen and be beside Jesus, to, to create that pocket of silence or, or that quiet that we heard about in the poem and simply to say yes to listening to Christ, to trusting that God's love is, is the ultimate agenda for this world. And in the quiet, we can hear that voice of love, that voice of the one who comes to us in the word made flesh, who is the promise for us. And as a people rooted in our watershed, and rooted in our world. We can trust in the love that has made us, that sustains us, that redeems us, and leads us forward in grace. And for that love, we can say, thanks be to God. Amen. Our next carol is a Coventry carol, which I, I've always felt had tones of a lullaby. So as we lift our hearts and music, perhaps we can think of drawing close to Christ, the, the baby Jesus, with this lullaby and these, this beautiful carol. i 
And friends, let's take some time now to lift our hearts to God with our pastoral prayers for this day. Gracious God, we pray this day for all who have come with us to Bethlehem. We pray for all who are poor and cold and hungry like the shepherds, that they may hear good news. We pray for all who are wandering and searching like the Magi, that they may find the place to leave their gifts and their burdens. We pray for all who are busy, hurried, preoccupied like the innkeeper, that they may know the peace that comes from genuine acts of hospitality. We pray for all like Herod, who have power, that they may use it with goodwill. We pray for ourselves, we who need comfort, peace, and joy, even in this starlit season and all the days of our lives. Amen. Friends, there are so many ways that we share our gifts with one another, with the wider world, and for the mission and work of God. With our time, our talents, and our treasure, we join Christ and join Christ's mission for the world to be able to spread God's love and to be a people of justice and of faith. However you make your offerings, whether it is on Sunday mornings through the offering plate, whether you'd like to make an online donation while we are worshiping online right now, you can go to our Canada Helps page or uh, through pre-authorized remittance, through email transfer, um, or by sending in uh, offerings to the church. We want to say thank you for the ways all through this year that you have supported the church. Uh, remember that any donations for 2022 need to come in to, uh, to the church before uh, December 30th. Um, but let's take some moment, a moment now to be able to dedicate our gifts and our offerings through music.
And as our time for worship comes to a close, I'll invite you to join me in the words that we speak for our benediction. And, and even if you want to at home, uh, you can raise your hands as we, as we bless one another. The light that enlivens all the world, the light that darkness cannot overcome, love's pure light in Jesus Christ, shine on you and in our world this day. Amen. Just a reminder, folks, that next week we will be worshiping online again for our January 1st service, and we're looking forward to welcoming uh, Reverend David Mundy and uh, Eric Mundy, who happens to be his brother and, and my uncle, to uh, in terms of music and uh, presiding for worship. And I want to wish all of you folks a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'm looking forward to seeing you again in January. God bless.